Hello everyone, Anthony Wood of Searchlight Simulations here with a quick tutorial. This is a little introduction to proper train handling. And this is for people that find it hard to get some good performance out of their uh, train as they run it down the line. So a couple things, this scenario is really good for two things. Uh, the first one is going to be starting your train on a grade. As you can see by the HUD here, I'm on about a 1% for three quarters of my train length. And uh, once we crest here at Ross Peak, we will be showing off balance braking. So to get started here, you know, one, for one, make sure your locomotive's in run. So I've already gone through and conditioned my locomotive. I'm in run. All of the trailing engines are in run. I am two by one on coal loads. Um, got my lights all set. Generator field is on. I've got my reverser now in forward. And you just want to Take a notch, kick off your automatic, let your air do its thing, wait until your flow is below 60 and then you can really start hammering after it. Um, because my train is partially on the grade and partially off the grade, I don't have to get too aggressive with it. I am in a, I believe, a 30 mile an hour, going down to a 25 and there is a slow order ahead. So I'll just be uh, slowly preparing myself for that. You just kind of want to feather off your independent. And because I'm on a 1%, you might need around notch 2, notch 3. And don't have to worry about getting a knuckle. The train is, at least in this situation, it was kind of stretched in. And just keep an eye out of your window. And notice that your train's starting to creep ahead. So then you can come off your independent completely. And just be really patient. Now, granted, uh, if you are in a timed scenario, you might not be able to have the grace of being really patient, but it certainly is a virtue as far as keeping your train together in one piece. Um, something you also want to keep in mind is that these locomotives are capable of a really high amount of tractive effort just on their own, and typical knuckles will break around 300,000 pounds of effort. So if you are conventional, which means all your locomotives are on the head end, no distributed power, keep in mind Watch your attractive effort. Take this times three, and you can easily exceed that 300,000 pounds of attractive effort very, very quickly and uh, result in a broken train. So now that we've got the train moving, we can start advancing in a bit. Um, skipping forward a little bit, I am now just coming Across the peak, my train is about halfway across, and I'm gaining speed at a decent rate. So what you want to do is be really patient and coming out of throttle, like once every couple seconds. I'm getting nearer to the speed limit. And because I'm going to be going down a heavy grade or a mountain grade, you're going to want to be prepared to use your automatic brake again. So I'm just going to keep it in coast one to keep the slack conditioned lightly and then finally go to idle. You're gonna wanna wait your 10 seconds, but considering I'm going down qu pretty quickly, I'm going to take a minimum reduction and make sure to bail that off. And that is actually pretty early. I can keep pulling it in this state, but you don't want to be pulling too hard just to get it over the peak of the grade. And you can use your HUD to cheat this a little bit, but I'm just about three quarters of the way over the grade, going down a 1% grade, which will steepen to like a 2.2% grade in not too long future or not too distant future. Once you find that your accelerometer is trending in the positive, which would be green, you were going to want to again reduce your throttle to idle, let it settle, get your slack conditioned, and then you can start lightly into dynamic braking. And this would be called balanced braking, where you have a light application or a light, medium to heavy application of dynamic brakes with a light application of your automatic brakes. Now, this is used to limit your in-train forces so you're not popping cars off in the middle of your train. 
it also helps you control your speed better. So if I'm coming down the grade too quickly for the dynamic brakes only to handle, you'll use you'll supplement your dynamic brakes with your train air, uh, such as a minimum 10 pounds, 12 pounds, uh, up to 15 pounds if need be if you're having a difficult time with traction or sorry if you're having a difficult time with uh, your train handling if it's starting to run away on you. Now do you mind that you cannot cycle your brakes especially not with this AC44. If you cycle your brakes you will find yourself out of air eventually. Uh, granted this train with distributed power will have a quicker recharge time but you do not want to get in the habit of taking air, releasing it, taking air, releasing it, because then you'll find that you'll be racing down the side of a mountain and likely derail. So be very mindful. So now notice that my accelerometer is trending in the positive. And even though my speed limit is 25 right now, I do, I am aware that I have a slow order coming up. So I'm just going to let it settle in idle, coast down the hill with the brakes set, and then um, in a short period of time here, I will be starting to bunch the train lightly with dynamic brakes like such. Let it sit and set up for a second. And then slowly advance into your dynamic braking range. Now you can use as much or as little dynamic brakes as you want, but it is highly, highly, highly recommended that you do make your changes in dynamic braking effort, excuse me, gradually. If you do something sudden like going from idle or throttle um, straight into dynamic brake 8, you have a high likelihood of popping your train off the tracks. It doesn't matter if it's empties or loads or whatever. Um, so just be very gradual. These AC traction locomotives are capable of putting out 120,000 pounds of dynamic braking effort under ideal rail head conditions. But as you can see, just with a light application of dynamic braking and a minimum reduction on my brake pipe, I am controlling the speed right at 20 miles an hour very nicely. So that concludes the tutorial for starting a train on grade as well as balance braking. Hopefully you guys have learned something with this and you can apply this in the future and you guys enjoy the product to its fullest with the real world application of skills and train handling ability into the simulator. Thanks for watching.